harvest, uh, the original play by Manjula Padmanabhan on which uh, Deham is based. When I read it the first time, what struck me was uh, the originality of its idea. The totally uh, fresh approach to the content that it was dealing with. And the fact that the though it is set in near future, it has that uh, element of science fiction in it, it concerned bas uh, basically the characters and the problem that was uh, uh, being dealt with in the play is something that we can identify it even today. It's not far removed from our uh, present at the moment. So its originality, the, uh, the way it's, uh, it's been treated, the subject has been treated and the very story uh, appealed to me immensely. Apart from the fact that it also provided me with an opportunity to work with uh, digital imaging for the first time, you know, in my film career. So I was very excited to do something with it. But basically it was this subject matter that excited me. Uh, in which era, which age is the film set and uh, what kind of a life do we see portrayed? Deham is perhaps India's first futuristic film. I don't think in the history of 100 years in Indian cinema we have a futuristic film in the sense that the film set in the future uh, with, a, with a serious content. So Deham takes place in 2022 in a small chawl in Bombay and has the background of trade in uh, human organs or what you might call the bioengineering as the background. Well, I think the kind of things that we are talking about in Deham are the kind of things we are going to face very soon. I mean, I have placed the film in 2022, but you could perhaps uh, be facing such things in 2005 or 2007. You see, the film basically uh, looks at not just the uh, trade in human organs. That is perhaps the starting point. The real point of the film the real subtext of the film, as you might call it, is the emerging relationship between the first world societies and the third world societies. How the MNCs and uh, other companies uh, or the big organizations or the big societies who have access to state-of-the-art technology and therefore resources can uh, uh, dominate not just the political and economic aspects of the, the societies which are underdeveloped, but also the, the very existence of human beings in those societies. And that's what is very, very important for me. It's the subtext of this new relationship that is developing, of the new equation that is bound to develop between uh, uh, the advanced societies and uh, the underdeveloped societies. And this is a speculation in that area. It's a, it's, it's a kind of a, a statement which you can perhaps argue with, but it is definitely a very, uh, very well-defined uh, uh, attitude towards that problem. Uh, this is not very different from the colonial days of our colonial past, and uh, it seems quite, uh, you know, perfect and right way that, you know, you are tackling this kind of Though set in the future, it has. Uh, uh you are uh, right there. Because Deham explores this uh, newly emerging equation of uh, uh, a new kind of colonialism that uh, we see developing. Now, this kind of colonialism is not uh, uh, determined by the armies moving in or by the traders moving in. This uh, kind of colonialism is based on uh, technology where the technology is used as a tool to seduce you, tool to you know, put you uh, under some kind of a, a very uh, passive state of mind, in a, in, in a mood to accept uh, things. And it's the kind of uh, uh, tool that uh, preys on your weakness, and your weakness is that you are poor, you don't have comforts of life. 
So this is a new kind of uh, uh, invasion that is taking place where the technology is uh, used to seduce you by giving you pleasure. So this is one aspect of uh, uh, the film which comes across very strongly uh, uh, you know, through the uh, progression of characters and the plot. As a filmmaker, how do you find uh, computer graphics and uh, you know, digital imagery and uh, was it exciting, was it new for you? This was my first time I was using um, digital imaging or digital technology uh, to that extent. I have used it earlier very in, in very small doses when I was doing uh, ad films. But here, the digital effects are nearly 20 minutes in the film. And I am very excited by it. I am very excited by the uh, possibilities of this kind of imaging uh, technology. Here, the entire designing and execution was done in India. This, we did not go abroad at all to get any kind of effects done. Uh, my special effects uh, supervisor was Ramesh Meer, and everything was done in his uh, uh, studio, the effects factory, <coughs> with a team of about seven young uh, designers. And the entire production designer design was done by uh, another young uh, designer called Deepali Meher. Uh, we sat together, went through the script, and created two-dimensional uh, drawings for all the uh, effects that we wanted. And then those two-dimensional drawings were converted into three-dimensional animation and three-dimensional images. We have all kinds of effects in this. We have uh, uh, images which have uh, been created from, the, uh, from, from nothing. Everything has been created digitally. There's no real footage involved. And that are fairly big shots. Then there are uh, some shots where the digital imagery has been composited with the live uh, action that we shot against the green background. And uh, so there's a combination, a different kind of combination of all kinds of uh, uh, effects here. And I think we have achieved a fair degree of uh, authenticity with that. Uh, what kind of characters have you placed in this uh, you know, futuristic environment? Are they you see, I, I imagined that the Bombay Chawls have not changed in the last 100 years. So it's very unlikely that they are going to vanish in the next 20 years. So the whole action takes place uh, in the Chawl. And we took the Chawls as they exist now as our model. We created a set and uh, uh, we shot most of the film on the set under control conditions with uh, complete sync sound. And the characters reflect uh, the character of uh, uh, people who live in the chows. That means uh, they are rather poor. They don't have very uh, you know, large means of support, not highly educated. The people who are struggling through life. And that indication of the period of 2022, we give very briefly through digitally generated images and the sets that we have created. And of course, the attitude of people, the kind of uh, problems they are facing, in, in the sense that if uh, one of the things that emerges most in the film is how the body, your own personal body, is used as a currency for survival. And we see how different characters, knowingly or unknowingly, are using their bodies uh, as, uh, as, uh, as a means of survival in different ways. So that is a very interesting and a very uh, new um, angle uh, to the whole uh, uh, situation. Uh, for Kittu Vidwani, probably this is a landmark film. Uh, how did you find her as an actress and how would you assess her performance? Kittu has worked with me earlier. And uh, I know her strengths and I know her weaknesses also. And when you know an artist that well, it's easier to work with them because then you uh, exploit their strengths to the maximum. The important thing was that Kittu, apart from being a very good actress, she uh, also is a very fine mind. So she could understand the subtext of the play very well. 
she could understand the politics of the play very well. And uh, since we shot the film in English, that was an added advantage because she has done English theatre also and she has a fairly good command over English. So that came in very handy. So uh, her choice was, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there was no much thinking about that. Uh, your last film was a venture which ventured into uncharted territory for you, which was commercial and became a big star song. So how was the whole experience now when you look back at it? Was it a learning experience? Was it frustrating or was it uh, See, I am always uh, fascinated by the form of the popular cinema because I think it comes nearest to our folk uh, forms. Uh, folk narrative theatre that we have in our country for centuries and centuries. So that form doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I know how to use that form. It's a question of uh, the kind of content you bring to that form. And the kind of content I brought to Takshak, perhaps that wasn't uh, uh, you know, accepted by the audience with great enthusiasm. <laughs> the film didn't do very well. But I'm not uh, discouraged at all. I'm not disappointed at all. I mean, I am looking forward to do something in the popular genre again, because now I know. The basic thing in the popular genre, if you want to do a good film, is to get the artists who uh, are with you all the time. And, uh, and you have to see that the dates committed are kept so that you don't. Uh, hmm. uh, yes, you were telling me about the popular genre and what you yeah. think will, uh, you know. I am really fascinated with the popular genre because I believe that uh, that is the nearest that comes to our traditional uh, narrative forms, whether they are folk forms or theatrical forms, like you have Ras Leela, Ram Leela, Notanki, Tamasha. See, all the elements of stylistic uh, nature that are seen in those forms have been adapted to Hindi uh, popular cinema form. So form, I find it very exciting. It's very uh, full of vitality. And uh, in fact, I'm looking forward to do something more in that uh, format. And hopefully, one will be able to do that soon. And uh, what, uh, uh, what is the process for Deham's uh, you know, release abroad? Or what festivals are you doing? Uh, Deham has gone to several festivals, I think seven or eight by now, including London and Jakarta and uh, Sweden, Gothenburg, where it got the award for the best Asian film. Uh, we are hoping to release the film sometime in April in India, and hopefully simultaneously uh, abroad also, at least US and UK, we are trying to tie up.